he was told by the doctors, he was told by family, you know, control your diabetes, control your blood sugar, don't eat this and, and don't eat that. Do you think he cared at the time? Two years ago, he lost his eyesight. And now he says, I wish I could turn back the clock, yeah, yeah, yeah. change back the time, I'll change my decision. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is the thing people don't see. The, the eternal consequence of rejecting Christ. Mm. So I guarantee on the day of judgment, people will be begging us, why didn't you, why didn't you yeah. like yeah. grab yeah. my attention? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? So the question is, I find Christian evangelism annoying. Why can't they let people live their lives? Wow. Fair question. Um, so we really got to dissect this question because what kind of evangelism are we talking about here? Are we talking about the evangelism street preaching? Are we talking about one-on-one? -on -one? But regardless, it says in Romans 10, 13, I believe, um, he, um, whoever calls on the name of God will be That's saved. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, it says, how can they believe in um, the one who they have not heard? Or how can they... Yeah. Here, if they haven't, um, no, you're on, you're on the right, you're on the right lines, yeah, 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 yeah. Them. yeah. And then the next, it says, um, how can, can they, they preach if they have not been sent? sent? Mm. Thank you so much yeah. for helping me. Come on, Second yeah. Corinthians, right? If you're if you're ever wondering if, as a Christian, are you being sent? It says in Second Corinthians. I know in certain translations it says we are Christ ambassadors, mm. but when I looked mm. at a, another translation, it says we are Christ's messengers. Mm. So when God is making His appeal through us, it's saying that God is using us to call on people to be reconciled back to him mm. therefore mm. your christianity you know is not a passive christianity mm. because people I, I i get the notion and and it might be innocent with oh just live it out you know the greatest evangelism is is through through your deeds and being mm. a good person whilst i understand that and whilst good deeds complement mm. your evangelism it is not evangelism in itself mm. yeah. it requires mm being Words. bold yeah. and, and, and preaching and saying Speaking. something mm. because declaration is never about passiveness it's mm. being very offensive in, in that sense and when we look mm. at jesus the greatest ev evangelist right his his ministry was always disruptive mm. Mm. and so when we when us as christians are taking a step back i'm thinking oh no huh. we're too destructive too mm. destructive for the society mm. That's the point. i'm trying to what i'm i'm figuring out right now where in this christian walk have we decided that we're going to take a step back from the kingdom of darkness because they're taking it through violence mm. and we mm. as christians are standing back passively thinking oh but the greatest love is to leave someone alone mm. when when, mm. when 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 scripture says that to love someone is to make is to, to, to pull them out mm. of, of 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 their sin mm. right Mm. And so, so, so that's what I'm thinking. Are we saying this um, because unknowingly we have a fear? Mm. We're not bold mm. enough to actually speak out about it. Mm. Or two, um, maybe at the same time we don't have the fire as other evangelists have. So we might be comparing ourselves and we might feel envious or jealous. And mm. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've been there. Mm. I, before I started evangelizing, I used to see other Christians so stirred up. And I'll be thinking, okay, you're doing too much. Why are you preaching on the train? Why are you preaching in, in, in the airport? And it, God really showed me my heart, which was you're, you're coming from a sense of comparison because you, because like at the moment you feel like you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So what, what seems as normal to Christianity is overdoing it for you yeah. because you haven't received that, that revelation of what I've actually done for the world. Because mm -hmm. if you actually had a revelation of the gospel, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't even shut up that fire that's in yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You can't shut it up. Mm. It's it's so easy to see everybody in the world shouting mm. about their football team. Yes, about yes, Jesus. yes. Why can't we shout about Jesus? Mm. Yeah. Come on. Why can't we shout about someone mm. who saved not only us, not only the church, but the world? The world. Therefore, mm. the gospel is not applicable to just the Christians. It's applicable to everyone. That's the it. Muslims, the atheists, mm. LGBTQ, mm. all of that kind of stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love I love what Ryan Habanki said. He said that an unpreached gospel is no gospel at all. Mm. So how can people be saved if we don't preach the gospel? Mm. And and how can we keep silent? Mm. You know, you know, the, the gospel was never meant to be, in a sense, convenient for people to hear. Yeah. Obviously it's convenient in its in its entirety, mm. but in the way that they see convenience, mm. you're disturbing my life yeah. right now. Mm. You're disturbing my complacency. Mm. But actually if someone's drowning, 
You, yeah. You're not going to allow them to drown. Mm. You're going to be like, Lord, I'm going to throw you a life right, man. Take a hold of it. Right. You know, the Bible says, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade people. Mm. Yeah. You know, and we go out into all the world and preach the gospel. My mm. brother, um, this is a great illustration. You know, my brother grew up as a diabetic from a very young age. And uh, he was told by the doctors, he was told by family, you know, control your diabetes, control your blood sugar, don't eat this and, and don't eat that. Do you think he cared at the time? Mm. He, he didn't care. In fact, it was, it was frustrating for him to hear, you know, us nagging on at him, you know, don't do that, don't do that, like stop, control your blood sugar. Because in the end, you can either lose your eyesight or, you know, you can get gangrene and all these different kinds mm. of things. We're saying it for his long-term good. But two years ago, he lost his eyesight. And now he says, I wish I could turn back the clock, yeah, yeah, yeah. change back the time, I'll change my decision. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is the thing people don't see, the, the eternal consequence of rejecting Christ. Mm. So I guarantee on the day of judgment, people will be begging us, why didn't you, why didn't you yeah. like yeah. grab yeah. my attention? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Why, why didn't you try harder? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And we'd have wished we'd have done more. Mm. And that's why I think it says in Revelation that he will have to wipe away every tear from our eye. Because in chapter, that's in chapter 21. And in chapter 20, it talks about the great white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. And if people's names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. And I think this is, this is something, we won't be like shedding it, we'll be wailing. Like, God, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why did I do more? Mm -hmm. Why didn't I tell that person? Why was I so afraid? Because mm -hmm. we'll see people being cast into the lake of fire and we didn't do you know, a lot with our lives to, to try to pull people out of this terrible place. It's so sobering what you're saying. Essentially, that's what we're called to do as Christians. And it's so important we understand that. I, I love how you broke it down. So people are separated from Christ. We are separated from Christ because of our sins. And we need to be, we need to believe in Christ and repent of our sins, believe in Christ in order that we will have eternal life. Mm. We have been given eternal life yeah. by God's grace. Mm. There's a people out there every single day we go out, we see people who do not have this eternal life. Mm. How are we to live comfortably mm. knowing that they are separated from God for eternity? Wow. Hell is not a day, it's not mm. two days, it's not hundred years. Is eternity separated from God? And we have the message. Christ has entrusted us. We are messengers, as yeah. you said. Yeah. God has entrusted us with his message. Mm. Why, how can we sit comfortably back in our day-to-day -day lives That's and true. not preach this message to people? Mm. That's why it's imperative that we go, we go out and tell people. In the scripture you gave in Romans 10, mm. it says, but so we want people to believe. How will people believe unless they hear? They need to mm. hear. Yeah. Hearing comes from the preaching of the word. Mm. When we go out and preach, people have the opportunity to receive salvation. Mm. It's imperative. All this, obviously, our conduct and the way we live, acts as a witness mm. it's a witness for people to then mm. believe but we have to understand that the gospel is spoken mm. it's spoken through mm. the words knowing that christ mm. did this for us he died for our sins mm. he died that we will not have to be pe we will not have to perish we will mm. have oneness we will have a relationship with the father we have to tell people this and by that we are believing god to do the work of salvation in their hearts Amen. that they will then come to the father they will mm. then receive eternal life mm. even in the scripture we hit this is the problem right we have because we're living in this age we're living in this time we don't see things etern eternally right so we even see scriptures that talk about the angels for the salvation of just one soul there is joy in heaven so wow. the, the wow. angels rejoice at the salvation mm. of one soul that's how big it is for one person to be saved and we have to have that heart as we meditate on the word as we look to the word of god our hearts we our, the posture of our hearts begin to turn and we see wow this is how god sees things mm. and we got with that attitude that's why it's yeah. important we have to look past our oh, people might be uncomfortable okay mm. you're uncomfortable for a second yeah. this is someone's yeah. eternity yeah and it's obviously it's easier said than done like yeah. we're not all no, no mm. one's perfect we don't evangelize to every single person we meet mm. that's that's just the truth mm. but that attitude and that heart to know that yes when we speak to people, God's power is at work and that mm. they can be saved through that preaching. Amen. It's so important that we have that attitude. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's why I... Yeah. And I feel like off the back of that, there's two things that I wanted to touch on, which is just the fact that they said it annoying. Like, mm. the word of God is going to provoke the mm. spirit. Mm. Like, it's going to provoke mm. the yeah. spirit. Because it's not just any random word. Mm. So mm. people saying, oh, it's annoying and I don't like it. It's because their spirit, mm. the way that they're living, their lifestyles are being provoked. Mm. It's mm. being questioned. Yeah. And people know that inside of their hearts. Mm. Um, but I also want to touch upon the fact that people always say, like, just let me live my life. Mm. Mm. That they're not living. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Living. Yeah. I think so. On that, actually, that's something I did think about before. The word annoying, like, why is it annoying? I, I even think of what Paul says. I think it's First Corinthians one. He says, um, the, "It's foolishness to people who are perishing. Our yeah. message is foolishness mm. to those who are perishing. Mm. It's like there's a resistance. Mm. Even in um, John three, I was thinking like people who saw Jesus, 
to think. So John 3, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, oh, but their eyes were, um, were darkened. Um, even though the light had come, their eyes were darkened. They did not go after the light which had come. It's like, why would people know that the light is there? Ah, because the light will reveal their evil deeds. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, it makes sense now. That's why they're annoyed. That's why yeah, they're frustrated right. because it's like, you're, you are touching on a sensitive yeah. area of my life, my sin. Mm. Yeah. You're, you're, you're provoking me to have to address the sin, to address my, my selfishness and my unwillingness to submit to God who created mm. me. And there's going to be something in me that resists that. That's the truth. But we don't then shy away from that resistance. We, we speak of God's goodness that he, even in that resistance, we love our wickedness, but God mm. is so merciful that he can forgive us and remove that from us. Mm. That's how good God is. That's why we go out and preach because we understand the eternal significance and ramifications of their actions. Mm. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think, I think it's so ironic how we don't mind that other people are still living in their sin, but because we're saved now, mm. and yeah, we don't want to know it, it's, so, it's selfish. It's mm. kind of selfish because we don't know, but I've been thinking in my life, like maybe that's because people actually haven't fully encountered Christ. Like we mm. have Christians who say they're Christians, but they haven't fully encountered that love that's of true. Mm. That's So true. when they see people evangelizing, they just think, oh, you're radical for now. Yeah. Mm. And then you're going to fall back. Yeah. And mm. then you're going to be where I am. But this mm. is what I'm saying. The radical that Christians are saying now is the norm in Acts. Yeah. Mm. When yeah. have yeah. we as a church mm, yeah, away yeah, from, the, yeah. from the fire of the Holy Spirit mm. which caused the apostles to go out and disrupt mm. different territories mm. to the point where the Pharisees are, are literally um, persecuting them or, or they were per being persecuted everywhere and I, I feel like we're, we're trying to stop the will of God from happening which is every believer is going to go through that persecution mm. now the persecution mm. is it by the message of preaching or the method of how you're preaching that's a different that's a different story mm. But what I'm saying is mm. that we're afraid mm. because the gospel is genuinely going to be offensive to people because mm. yes, Jesus is the way. Mm. Jesus is the only way. Mm. He is the only true vine. Mm. And when we talk about the good news, we need to remember that it is good. Mm. And it cannot be good if there is nothing that is bad. Mm. So what is the bad part of it? As you guys already said, we're sinners. Mm. And that needs to be preached. Mm. Otherwise, why do people think that they need a saviour yeah. if they're already... Mm. They think they're their, their own saviour. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Everybody's their own God, their belly's mm. their own God, their appetite Yikes. is their own God, etc, etc. People term. need to know that they need a saviour. Mm. Why it. do you need a saviour? That's when we start to dissect all of that. But do you know what? The fact that people are annoyed with evangelism, I've only ever heard that from my fellow brothers and sisters. That's what mm. I have not heard it from any unbeliever. And and you know what? When I when I went out evangelism, um, evangelizing for the first time, I approach people on the basis of just being a human. Mm. I don't I don't just see you as an assignment. You're not an assignment or, or someone mm. that that, that mm. is a, a tick on, on on my list or oh I say five souls today. No no you're a human. Mm. First and foremost, mm. you need love. Mm. Because we go around asking people, what do you think the purpose of life is? Mm. And that sparks off a conversation. Mm. And people like to speak about mm. themselves. Mm. This is what I think, this is what I've been through. Mm. And we listen. Mm. Right? That's first and foremost the respectful um a respectful thing to listen to other people despite mm. if you don't agree right mm. some of us will turn automatically into theological debate make it a personal thing and next thing you know you've lost that you've lost that person mm. you haven't been a good witness mm. but when i speak to these people although they might seem uncomfortable at first and yes like you already said it's uncomfortable to them they haven't walked away yet mm. Mm. Okay. they haven't walked away yet mm. but the mm. people that have walked away do you know why it's never personal to you because when it, the bible says if they reject you they're not actually rejecting you mm. they're rejecting Christ. me yeah. Yeah. but yeah. here the greatest thing about yeah. this is that god is not done with them mm. so if you sowed into that person yeah. now mm. so that seed. another mm -hmm. laborer is going to reap mm. in mm. different seasons yeah, yeah. yeah. wow well, and, li and literally like what happened to me like the other day is that someone messaged me I witnessed them four years ago wow. and they, they didn't receive Christ at the time, but literally they got in touch with me Sunday and they're like, I've got problems in my life. Mm. And, uh, you know, it might have been an inconvenience back then, but actually the seed, you know, literally he bared fruit. So he gave his life to the Lord literally just last week. And, and now wow. she's getting plugged into Praise the Lord church. So what were, might have been an inconvenience back then now has become a blessing, like he's changing his life. Yeah. But I would also say with, with, you know, with the annoying people, the cross is an offense mm. yeah. because the cross says to the world, you're a sinner. Mm. Because if, if Jesus hadn't have gone to the cross, you know, and we could have made our own way to heaven, there, there would have been no need for him to die. Mm. But the cross condemns the world and says, you're a sinner and you're in need of a savior. Mm. And that's why Jesus died. And Paul says, if I preach works, then the offense of the cross has ceased. Mm. The cross has an offense. 
And as Christians, we have to be okay with that. Yeah. You know, we live in England and we're considered to be like polite people where we don't like offending anyone. Yeah. And maybe in our natural like British nature, mm. like we, we don't like to, you know, bring an offense to people's yeah. lives, but it's part and parcel of the gospel. Yeah. yeah, and we have to understand, Jesus said, no servant is greater than their master. Yeah. If they persecuted me, <laughs> they will persecute yeah. you also. Yeah. Mm. We don't want to be persecuted mm. though. Yeah. Do you know what I think it is as well though? I feel like we've lost our fear of the Lord. Mm. And we fear people Ooh. instead. Yes. My goodness. We fear That's people true. instead. We fear people's responses. We fear losing friends. We fear losing Instagram followers. Mm. We fear people. Yeah. And we need to fear God. Yeah. We need to mm. fear God. With yeah. our holy fear and reverence mm. for who he is. Mm. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I'm just reminded of it's like to to be real, it's it is uncomfortable and I could, like we all probably have daily encounters with things like that where we're like where we're wrestling like oh, we want to evangelize but our flesh is saying no and mm. we're thinking of awkwardness uncomfortability we don't want to annoy someone but it comes down to it is is an eternal thing we're doing it's not isn't we're not doing it for this life we know we we have the truth and we have to go out of our way to, to give it to people mm. by all means even if it's uncomfortable do you, you know? i want to i want to say something like you know sometimes i'm not so disturbed that people are annoyed because i know that the gospel is convicting them mm. Mm. what actually disturbs me is when people are not bothered when they're not annoyed do you know what i mean yeah. like how can that's it like how can you hear about the sinless son of god he didn't have to die on the cross mm. But he did because he loves us. Mm. How can you hear that message, have the, the message of the cross painted to you mm. and then just go on as if it never happened? Mm. For me, that's far more disturbing. But at least I know the people that are being on it. I know that the, you know, it's touching a nerve. Mm. I know it's convicting them. Mm. But he said, what do they do with that conviction? Mm. How do they respond? Mm. But maybe also I'd say as Christians, I, like, I pose the question, I think it's important for us to pray. Mm. Like once we've yeah. said, it's not just saying like, mm. oh, we've done it, proclaim yeah. the gospel, I'm sorted, mm. I'm done, like I've done my evangelism for today. It's for us to say like, actually, I'm going to pray for these people because mm. I care, yeah. mm. I care, mm. like I care about their lives, I care about their souls, I care about whether or not like they're spending life with Jesus. Mm. So yeah, I feel like it's not just saying it, mm. then it's praying with it, yeah. it comes with action and yeah. our action is prayer. Yeah. Definitely. And I think I think it's true, you know, because like we talk about love as well, like you know, like we the church, oh, we gotta love people. Well, the best way to love people is you see preaching yeah. the gospel to them. Mm. To, to deny them the opportunity to come to Christ is probably the worst, yeah, the worst thing ever. To that's, pray, pray for loving, them, yeah. and and love them through the gospel, and yeah. and to pray for them is to spend time. It's to labor for their soul before God. Mm. To let this this world needs Jesus, man, yeah. like more than Desperate. ever before. Oh, God, God help the body of Christ as we go out and. Tell people about his goodness, about mm. his grace for Christ, you know? Mm. We need so. more laborers, man. Amen. Mm. Harvest will always be there. Yeah. Harvest yeah. is there. We, we need to be disruptors. We need to step up. Yeah, Disrupt us to the kingdom of darkness. Let the light shine. Yes. Let the light shine. <laughs>